Hello, everyone. I'd like to say thank you to Jenna Vukovic for organizing this amazing event and inviting us to speak here at the Hair Science e Summit. I hope you're enjoying the talks that are taking place today. My name is Barbara Bernardi. I'm an applications chemist at Clarion. And for this next talk, I'll be going over formulation concepts for hair care. And just to, pre and just to prepare you for what's about to come, um, here are the topics that will be talked about today. Um, I will start with an overview on um, Clarion and some marketing trends for hair care. Then we'll tackle what to consider when formulating shampoos, followed by how to formulate conditioners, and at the very end, I'll go over some takeaways. So let's kick this off and talk a little bit more about Clarion. Some quick background info for those of you who may not know Clarion. We are a specialty chemicals company. Our purpose statement is greater chemistry between people and planet. So through our company history, we've remained focused on connecting customer focus, innovation, sustainability and people. We serve the personal care industry from our care chemicals team, which is one of Clarion's three major business units. Our collective expertise and passion is evident through our, through our various capability centers scattered throughout the globe. Our personal care portfolio has versatility across many different applications. That enables many market relevant formulation types for the hair care segment. And we're keeping a pulse on the current trends and here's what we're seeing in North America. Some of the trends that are gaining popularity include skinification of hair, personalized routines, scalp care, treatments for hair loss, hair styling such as the slick look and conscious beauty. In terms of retail market development in North America the most interesting thing to point out is that people are more and more looking for, for professional hair care brands and this shows how the consumer is trying to be more informed and are willing to go the extra mile for the hair care routine. So now that we've set the stage for the hair care market, let's talk about formulating. And we are going to start off talking about shampoo. So what is the primary function of a shampoo? The short and straightforward answer is to clean. Clean the hair and the scalp from sebum, oil, pollution and product buildup. The main ingredients that help us achieve that are called surfactant systems, and they do that through what we call the roll-up mechanism. When the hair gets dirty, it means that there is a, a layer of foil and dust that gets deposited on top of the hair fiber or scalp. Because the surfactants can reduce the surface tension of that layer, it makes it easier to remove it by rolling it up into a micelle that can be easily washed away. And that's why it's called the roll-up mechanism. But lately, the consumer has been asking a little bit more about for their shampoo formulations. The consumer not only wants their shampoo to clean the hair, but also to condition, protect the color, give volume, give body, and do a bunch of other things. These requests certainly made the job of the formulators a lot more difficult because there are more things that we need to consider when formulating a shampoo. From a formulator's point of view, a typical ch shampoo chassis has the following composition. Water, anionic surfactants, amphotheric and anionic surfactants, pearlizers, rheology modifiers, conditioning agents and preservative systems. Now it is our job to figure out how to match these ingredients to what the consumer is looking for. When we think about cleansing power, we think of the detergency of the surfactant system and how to balance the surfactant types to achieve the cleansing power your consumer is looking for. The firm profile of the shampoo is responsible for most of the consumer experience, and the main factor that drives the foam in a shampoo is also the surfactant system and what the firming profile looks like. That includes the surfactant's bubble size, flash foamability, and how easily the bubbles collapse after forming. Not only that, but there are also all the ingredients that we need to be wary of because they can either increase or decrease the firming ability of the, um, of the surfactant. And I just wanted to point out that although both the detergency and the firming rely on the surfactant, these attributes are not correlated. A surfactant that foams a lot might not clean as efficiently. Then to decrease the, irrit the irritancy, we need to look into each ingredient to make sure that they are mild to the skin. 
And this needs to be done specially if you want to claim tier three formulations. Formulators should also um, use ingredients that will perform according to what the consumer wants, which means use ingredients that are known for conditioning, volumizing, or color protection. The Rheology modifier can play a huge part in the thickness of the shampoo formulation, their spreadability, and it can also impact on the packaging used. And now that different shampoo formats are trending, formulators can rethink the ratio of the ingredients to accommodate this change in format. Um, and when we talk about formats, we are talking about what the shampoo looks like. If it's a powder, a solid, a concentrated, a traditional liquid, a shampoo, or even a paste. But regardless of what the shampoo looks like, the chosen ingredients should still make up a shampoo with the following properties. Good foaming, low irritancy, balanced detergency, long lasting fragrance, and be readily washed off. And when we think about surfactants, these are some of the boxes that we need to check to please the consumer. The first one is mildness. Besides being an effective cleanser, the surfactant system is expected to be mild, gentle to skin and hair. Because cleansing should not disrupt the natural moisturizing factor, lipids, nor proteins of the skin, nor surface or color of the hair. Then there's foam. For consumers, the visual and sensory properties of foam are important and closely linked to, the, to a pleasant cleansing routine. An optimized foam profile is key in cleansing formulation developments. Skin and hair cleansing. Because the shampoo is responsible to clean the hair and the scalp, the surfactant system should be able to effectively clean the skin without being too aggressive and also avoid color faintness and leave a smooth after feel. And lastly, being eco-conscious. Surfactants nowadays are expected to have a high renewable carbon index, be biodegradable and meet major ethical labor requirements. And when formulators try to check all those boxes while designing a shampoo, some challenges will, will start popping up. These challenges include uh, making the right combinations to achieve a good foam pattern, a desirable sensory um, and performance, an ideal viscosity and suspension power, an affordable price when it comes to ingredients and processing, mildness to the skin, eyes and hair, and an acceptable naturality index. And the best way to deal with these challenges is by understanding the core aspect of your ingredients when it comes to their technical and performance data. For instance, when pondering about which surfactants to use, it's important to know about the cleansing profile. If it's mild, gentle, effective, and with color protection properties. Their foam and sensory profile, if it will live up to the market expectations. Their technical parameters, such as chemical class, charge, CMC, four point, surface tension, and optimum pH. The application details as mildness, foam profile, if it's salt thickening, how much salt it can hold without crashing the formulation, and solubilizing power, especially when it comes to fragrances and some other attributes such as naturality, formulation benefits, sensory and foam morphology. And when it comes to performance, myotifactants can assist with color care by preventing the color loss when compared to sulfate-based surfactants, um, being, uh, helping keep a hair, healthy hair cuticle because they're less aggressive to the hair fibers. They help maintain a healthy appearance and smooth feel and preventing hair breakage. Because myosurfactants help keep the hair cuticle aligned, the hair can be detangled more easily, decreasing the chances of breakage. And to test that performances, there are equipments that can read the intensity of a specific color, and with that, we can assess color fading. There are also equipments capable of measuring the force to comb a hair dress, and this can help us when evaluating the detangling ability of a product. And there is also the multi combing that performs hundreds of cycles of combing to evaluate hair breakage under stress. And to help the formulator choose the best surfactants for their formulation, it is important to have an open communication with the supplier so they can provide you with the specifications you need. 
For instance, one of Clarion's myotifactin lines is called glucotame, and is a line made of glucamides. When presenting the surfactants, some of the attributes that are talked about are formulation benefits, such as color protecting abilities, solubilizing abilities, thickening properties, softness claims, and foam boosting abilities. We also talk about their sensory profile um, when compared to what is available in the market, if it's more conditioning or clarifying, and if the bubbles are creamier or airier. And also the foam morphology, such as foam volume, height, density, bubble size, and foam stability, which means how fast it collapses. Because all these parameters play a great part when choosing the right surfactant for a shampoo formulation, we can even look a little deeper into the technical parameters of a specific surfactant. For example, the glucotin can. Here we can see all the attributes I talked about in the beginning of this presentation that could impact the formulation, such as sensory, morphology, sustainability profile, as well as technical specific specifications like the CMC, surface tension, optimum pH, among other attributes. And there's also the performance data that will back up the claims the consumer is looking for. For example, when we claim when we claim that glucotin care had a caring and moisturizing after feel, it is because our technical team took a zoomed in picture of virgin hair, a hair washed six times with SLES, which is um, sodium lower sulfate, and um, a hair wash six times with, with glucotin care. And they observed that the cuticles of the hair washed with glucotin care were aligned in a similar way to the virgin hair, while the one washed with sodium lower sulfate looked more damaged and unaligned. Then, when talking about the foam structure, we run tests to compare the bubble patterns amongst cocomidopropyl betaine, sodium lower sulfate, and glucotin care. And after recording a video of the bubble pattern, the equipment takes picture like these ones and also measure the bubble density, size, and everything else that is claimed on the technical sheet. Now, when we claim color protection, it is because we use a colorimeter to measure how much the color faded after three wash cycles with either sodium lower sulfate and glucotin care. And after doing this experiment, Experiment, the results show that the hair dress washed with glucotin care lost 29% less of its color when compared to the hair dress washed with SLES. And then there's even more data showing how glucotin care interacts as a blend with sodium lower sulfate and how that could impact the compatibility. So this is a closer look into the foam structure of different surfactant systems. Sodium lower sulfate, Cocomidopropyl betaine, glucotin care, and then we have a blend of sodium lower sulfate and cocomidopropyl betaine, then two blends of sodium lower sulfate and glucotin care. This one containing more sodium lower sulfate, and this one containing more glucotin care. Now, on this side, we have hair detangling data showing that the hair washed six times with sodium with um, glucotin care needed 84% less force to be combed when compared to the hair washed with SLES. And even if the formulator wants to make a blend of glucotin care and SLES, that blend can favor the combing in 10%. And I just wanted to mention that combing is not only important for making the, the hair detangling session easier. Even if your hair is already easy to comb, one of the reasons why it could be important to make it even easier is to reduce breakage. Breakage can happen with repetitive tension. Therefore, the easier it is to comb the hair, the more cycles or combing sessions you can get from a hair fiber before it breaks. And the reason why I'm talking about the performance and specifications is only to illustrate how specific you can be when inquiring about an ingredient and how knowing the specifications of raw materials can help guide you when planning a shampoo formulation. Now, moving on from liquid formats onto solid formats, one of the reasons why, it's, why this market is growing so much is because solid formats have less water in the formulation and is associated with sustainability and circularity, 
offering a solution to plastic pollution and reducing the carbon footprint. Now, more than eco-friendly, they can be more economical. A lot of them are multifunctional and convenient, and besides, the ingredient list being simpler too. These formats can be appealing to consumers that are inclined to the natural side, consumers that need to travel a lot, or the ones that want to introduce more simplicity into their lifestyle. It also opens the door to more packaging possibilities, avoiding plastic and offering easy refills. When it comes to shampoo bars, their typical composition is solid surfactants, liquid surfactants, structuring agents, emollients and oils, preservative systems, color and fragrances. The surfactant content of a shampoo bar is basically the same of a liquid shampoo, with the major difference being that the bars don't have water and they have more fatty alcohol that will help the solid format. Oils and butters can be added too, with the butters also contributing to the solid state. And to make all that happen, a hot process is needed to melt it all up, mix it well, and then perform a hot pour. One way to make a shampoo bar is by making a cinder bar. That means that a blend of surfactant is used instead of making the surfactant from a vegetable source through saponification. Cinder bars have the advantage of being milder due to their neutral pH matching the pH of the skin. Some of the common ingredients in cinder bars are sodium cochlear isothionate, sulfoxanate, alpha olefin sulfonate, alkyl glycerol ether sulfonate, sodium cochlear monoglyceride sulfate, and betaines. We can also take a closer look into these ingredients. For example, the sodium cochlear isothionate specs talk about some of the benefits, like being plant-based, having a stable form, silky after feel, and tolerance to hard water. Then we can look into the sensory comparison to all the surfactants in the market. What the foam morphology looks like in terms of foam height, volume, stability, bubble size, and density. Here we have some key information like the inky, charge, and physical form. We can also see the ingredient sustainability profile like the RCI, that stands for Renewable Carbon Index. And finally, the technical specification sheets such as CMC, surface tension, optimum pH, pH value in water, among other things. And to back up that data, we can see the foaming pattern generated by the foam analyzer that compares um, sodium, co that compares cocomidopropyl betaine, um, SLES, and sodium cochlear isothionate, which is our host upon SEI. And we also have data backing up the color protection claim using a colorimeter to see that after three wash cycles with SEI helped reduce the color fading 35% when compared to SLES. Now moving on to a different type of formulation, let's talk more about let's talk about conditioners. So hair conditioners are used because they provide body, bulk, and bounce to hair, shine and luster, smooth and silky look, softness, detangling abilities, static control, and they reduce the drying effects of, of a shampoo. And the reason why hair conditioners can bring these attributes is because a conditioner formulation is designed to deposit a controlled amount of conditioning ingredients onto the hair which is meant to form a layer that remains even after rinsing. These conditioning ingredients is nothing, are nothing less than surfactants, but the positively charged ones, also known as cationic surfactants. A typical conditioner chassis is made of water, cationic surfactants, consistency factors, um, conditioning polymers, emulsifiers, emollients and oils, preservation systems, and solubilizers. And even if we play with the ingredient proportions, we can break this category down into four, fa into four formats. Rinse off, con rinse off conditioners that are meant for everyday use. Leave on conditioners, which are light conditioning formulations meant to stay on the hair until the next wash day. Masks and deep treatments that are not meant for everyday use because of its intense conditioning. And cleanse conditioners meant to gently cleanse the hair while conditioning at the same time. Now to bring 
breaking down how hair conditioners work, we need first to understand that the hair at neutral pH has a negative charge. Because hair conditioners have cationic surfactants as one of the main ingredients, these molecules get attracted by the negatively charged surface of the hair. This attraction results in the deposition of cationic surfactants on the hair, especially on weathering parts. And the reason why conditioners should be used right after shampooing is because the shampoo makes the hair even more negative, making it easier for the conditioner to attach themselves to the hair surface. Because uh, besides that, um, conditioners help reduce the spotic charge developed by the interaction between an ionic surfactants of the shampoo and the negatively charged surface of the hair. And it also reduces the friction between the hair fibers by closing the cuticles, which also helps the hair feel smoother and easier to comb. With this in mind, one of the main goals when creating a hair conditioner is to keep hair fiber integrity after shampooing and to help and help with both detangling and styling. And to do that, the conditioning agents needs to be able to deposit on the top of the hair in a controlled way and stay there after the rinsing step. To achieve that, the best system is an emulsion based on cationic surfactant. The components that make the chassis a stable formulation are the emulsifiers and the cationic surfactants. This combination helps create an emulsion, which is the best format to assist with the deposition of conditioning agents on the hair. Other ingredients like refetting agents, emollients, and rheology modifiers make part of the chassis and contribute to the formulation and the performance. Working with a blend of cationic surfactants can help a formulator to develop a chassis designed to specific need. Some cationic surfactants include quaternary, ammonium compounds, amidoamines, and estaquat. Diving into the quaternary systems, we can see a predictable behavior when looking to the size of a carbon chain. The longer the carbon chain, the better the conditioning, but the worse the solubility in water, which makes sense because for the cationic surfactant to remain on the hair when rinsed, they shouldn't interact well with water in the first place. But on the other hand, the less soluble they are in water, the greater the tendency to build up on the hair. One way that we can overcome the buildup issue is by using an amine like steramidal propyl dimethylamine, which is our genamine SPA. You can see how this amine differs from the centrimonium chloride, one of the most widely used conditioning agents. And, is also a, and it has also a really good performance when used in combination with with behentrimonium chloride, that is another traditional conditioning agent. The majority of hair conditioners available in the market are made of lamellar gel network. That is an oil in water formulation that uses cationic surfactants to swell fatty alcohols. To achieve this structure, a combination of low and high HLB surfactants should be used. Ideally, the ones that can thicken water and shear thin during application. Because the lamellar gel network is mainly a bilayer structure, it can easily slide amongst each other, providing the slippery and smooth feel to wet hair that we are used to. The lamellar gel network is responsible for thickening and stabilizing the formulation, increasing the deposition of cationic surfactant, fragrance, and emollient, helping to disperse and stabilize emollient oils, provide a wet, slippery, and smooth feel during application, provide wet detangling and dry conditioning, and reduce hair friction and static charge. This type of structure is really important because it's made up of small cells that can penetrate in between the cuticles to smooth the hair fiber. Now, here are some factors that could affect the lamellar gel network performance. The total surfactant concentration can affect both viscosity and conditioning properties. Another factor that can play a part on the viscosity and conditioning properties is the ratio of high HLB surfactants to total surfactants. That should be ideally 30% for maximum conditioning. The chain size of the chosen surfactants, for example, the best, H, the best low HLB surfactants are subtle, sterile, and behenyl alcohols, while the best high HLB surfactants are steramidopropylamine and behentrimonium chloride and their combinations. The use of electrolytes, branched 
or unsaturated fatty acids and polymers should be minimized because they can impact the viscosity and stability in a negative way. And not only ingredients, but also the processing can highly impact in the lamellar gel network formation. The type of shear, the moment when shear is applied, the cooling rate, and the order of addition of ingredients all play a factor when making a conditioner formulation. And it's also important for the formulator to meet both the consumer needs with the formulation content. For example, a mix of cationic surfactant that is known for the, their anti-freeze properties and definition, like the polyquatinium 116, which is Argen Advanced Life, with another conditioning agent that brings volume, like steramidopropyl dimethylamine, which is Argenamine SP SPA, can be the perfect combination for curly hair types to make sure that the curls stay defined without weighing them down. A blend of these ingredients will make up a readily biodegradable chassis that is compatible, compatible in either leave-on or rinse-off formulations. This blend can also assist with the fiber alignment and make sure that, it has, that, that the hair has volume and definition at the same time. And what I hope you've taken away from this session is that for shampoo formulation, it is really important to select a balanced surfactant blend to improve not only the performance but also the experience for the consumer. Being able to know the properties of the surfactants you want to add to a formulation can make your selection easier. Playing with the synergies between surfactants could be the trick for a good shampoo chassis. Foam and fragrance are key parameters for a shampoo because it is responsible for, it, for the consumer experience. But remember that the foam amount and structure is not directly, directly correlated with the cleansing power. The rheology of a shampoo can impact in different properties like flow, like flow package, and um, spreadability. And now, what I wanted to take away from the conditioner formulation is the importance of using conditioner after shampooing. Remember to take into consideration the consumer needs when formulating a conditioner, especially the hair type, and choose the ingredients that will best fulfill their needs. And that you can formulate your conditioner to be used in different ways, as a daily rinsable conditioner, as a leave-on, as a mask, or as a cleansing conditioner. I truly hope I was able to shed some light on what it's like formulating hair care products, and I thank you ever so much for your attention.